Good morning, magandang umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Uh, today is going to be step one of a multi-step process of trying to get the, the life support system built for the koi pond back here. This morning, I'm ahead of you all. I actually went ahead and I thought to myself, well, before we actually start doing the pipes and all the connection and all the hardware and the life support area that we put together the other day, it would be a good idea to see if over a year, maybe between a year and a year and a half, if my pond has retained the water uh, that I put in it before I left in it in the summer of 2016. Well, this morning was spent uh, removing, you see all that wood behind me over my shoulder there, uh, that wood and uh, leftover PVC, you can see PVC underneath the bottom, that was a cover. You saw that was a cover on here. So what I wanted to do, uh, I pulled it off and I, I had no idea what I was going to find, either an empty pond or a pond full of water or some alligators. I don't, I don't know about the alligator part. But anyway, I wanted to see uh, what the status of the pond was. And to my delight, it is in perfect shape. So one of the things that I need to do, it's not a pressing issue, but I just need to clean the ledge, the concrete ledge that goes all the way around this pond. But all in all, I'm, I'm happy because it's in really good shape, which means I can focus on other things. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to work on looking what's inside the uh, settlement tank, which is over there, over there, and then the, uh, the skimmer. Uh, but you can see the skimmer looks in good shape just from the top portion of it. And it has an overflow, and I just need to make sure that the overflow is working properly and sending water. And I believe it has because uh, it's at the exact level where it should be all the time. The level we have right now, when I built it, I have an overflow uh, section inside there so that it never goes above the level it is right now. So I'm going to make an assumption here that since it is in, it can't be a coincidence. Well, it could be a coincidence, but I don't know, that it is at the exact maximum level uh, that it should be all the time. Now this pond, as you see, it's all PVC liner on the inside, all PVC. Eventually what it's going to be is we're going to put stones inside there, some flat riverbed stones inside there, so you don't see the PVC liner and it will look like a natural habitat for fish, uh, but that's later on down the road. Uh, right now we just need to get the life support system working and do a cleanup today. So today, before we even get into the into the uh, life support, doing all the connections and hooking everything up. It's a clean up day for me. So anyway, let's go ahead and get today started. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. Well, I kind of got things cleaned up uh, around the around the pond. Uh, cleaned up around. I opened up the settlement tank. I opened up the uh, the skimmer. Everything looks good there. One thing I need to do. One of the first steps I need to do is to make a connection that gets both the settlement tank and the skimmer uh, th to go into the three-way diverter. Uh, this right over here. Uh, so my first step is going to be find the best place. For the uh, for the pump itself, which I think it's going to be right here. I think this is going to work right here. And then what I have to do is I have to do some dry fitting of some um, elbows and some of the connectors. Uh, we want to make sure that we have uh, like a union or a slip joint in the event that we need to remove the pump at some point for maintenance or replacement. That we can easily do that without having to cut any pipes. Uh, so make sure that you give yourself some leadway uh, for later on for doing some maintenance. So let's go ahead and get started with that.
Okay, so that's the main connection. That's the connection from the settlement tank and the skimmer uh, that goes to the three-way diverter and that diverter goes into the pump. And that connection is already done as well. So the next connection that we have to make, we have to uh, put a, a uh, check valve in uh, at this point right here, the output, the output of the pump. And then we'll work our way from there over into the uh, one of the filters. Well, before we go any further, one of the things I need to do, I need to put the biomedia inside the the uh, Ultra 2 right here, uh, the canister, the big uh, container here. Uh, and that media looks like this. There's three, there's three big bags of this, and the way you put it inside, and it's good to do it ahead of time because once we put the top on and we put our unions on, it's gonna be very difficult. And it says it in the instructions anyway, to do that first before you assemble uh, your top portion, was, it's just this right over here. So anyway, it has this really neat little feature. It has, this, I thought it was something that you throw away. I almost threw it away, but it's not. What it does is it's, it distributes out and when you put it inside here, you see you want to make sure that you don't get any of the, uh, the biomedia in that hole in that center right there because it will clog it up. So it comes with this little piece of cardboard, this covers it, and at the same time it allows you to distribute your media uh, equally everywhere inside uh, the canister right here. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, now all the media is inside. Now we can go ahead and insert our controller, our diverter and washout, and uh, the main, uh, the main meat and potatoes of the of the uh, biomechanical filter here. Then what we have to do, what we have to do, we have to figure out the best way for routing. The normal way to do it, you come up from the pump straight and a 90 degree elbow and this is the intake from the pump and this is the output that goes back to the waterfall back to the pond and it has to connect to these two filter or these two pipes right here uh, I just have to make sure that I have the right connections before I permanently put anything inside of here of course there's couplers uh, or unions there's three unions on here so if you ever do need to do any maintenance with this you can do it as well at the bottom there is a washout as well uh, so right now we have to figure out what's the best way to route our two inch pipe into the biomechanical filter. Before I go any further, let's go ahead and put the check valve in. I have two kinds of check valves. I actually have a check valve that has a flow meter on it and I have just a plane, the, the real simple one that just has a, a flapper valve. And it has to be installed in an upright position. It can't be sideways or down uh, because it's just a uh, open flapper that's on there. And it even has a directional arrow that says uh, always install upward in this position. Now the one that has a flow meter on, it only has a flow meter that goes up to 110 gallons uh, per minute. Uh, 110 gallons per minute and then there's 60 minutes and I think that comes up to about 6600 
uh, per hour, 6,600 gallons per hour. And remember, our pump is rated at 7,000 something. So I think that's just a little bit too much for that that flapper valve inside there. It's not a flapper valve; it's spring loaded. I think it will be in the full open position and might actually damage it. So we'll go uh, with the least expensive option, but probably the right option for this, uh, this configuration. Well, not as much accomplished state as I had hoped for, but at least it's slow and we're going in the right direction, I believe. One of the things is when you plan out your, your, uh, your life support system, even though it's in a block diagram, what looks on the block diagram not, not exactly worked, uh, uh, organized side by side. Remember a block diagram, that's all it is. It shows all your components and what you need to connect it up. It doesn't show you how you'll connect them up with elbows and all the kind of things that you need inside your uh, compartment, which is the shelter that we have back here. Uh, so there were a couple of challenges today. I think we did fine with the challenges. Uh, so right now we have our, our connection here, our input to the pump from the settlement tank and from the skimmer. We have the check valve. I actually put two check valves in there. Don't ask me why I put two check valves inside there. Uh, I will, it's a long story and I will tell you maybe some other time. Uh, we have the connection going in into the uh, the bead filter over here. Uh, we have the output of the bead filter going to that other diverter, the, the three-port diverter. And what I am working on right now is connecting it up to the UV filter. Remember, one goes to the UV filter, one goes to a bypass, then it will go down to another diverter that's going to end up going to the TPR jet and to the waterfall. Uh, that should all get accomplished tomorrow, which means we could possibly, even tomorrow, possibly, I don't know, it depends on the weather, it depends on uh, how far I am with some other things, other projects I have to work on around the house here, but we could possibly actually uh, have water flowing. I don't know. Uh, we will see. So uh, Ness, I believe she has a shout out and uh, it's a special shout out and I, I, I think it's going to be uh, for one of our Japanese uh, subscribers and since she speaks Japanese fluently, we'll let her do the shout out right now. Well, this is going to be the end of today's episode, but we are not going to close out today's episode. It's going to be a continuation tomorrow since it was so short today, and it's going to be some more pipe fittings in the life support system. But before we close for today's segment, which we're not really closing, we're going to do a couple of shout outs. And the shout outs are uh, one from Japan, and Ness lived in Japan for 15 years, so she is going to do this one. And this one is coming from Renato and daughter Irene. And this is for um, Ikeda Midori. Otanjobi <laughs> omedeto! And we also have one more for today, which is uh, April 25th. And this one is for Douglas Hill, one of our longtime subscribers. He is turning 50 today. So, anyway, to both of you, we want to wish you both a happy, happy birthday. birthday. Well, anyway, Ness told me I should close this out for today, and we will just start a new video for tomorrow for what's remaining. I remember tomorrow it's going to be working on the connection to the UV, the bypass for the UV, and maybe maybe a test. We might do an actual test of the, uh, the, the, the pump to see if the pump actually starts flowing some water. That will be really, really exciting for me. Uh, so anyway, until tomorrow, if you enjoyed today's video, uh, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, please share, and if you have not subscribed, just click on the little My PI Dream heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You will be subscribed <laughs> and you will be notified the next time we upload in a video, which will be tomorrow probably. So, anyway, until tomorrow, you have a wonderful and blessed day. 